salt, weigh out 58.5 milligrams, and put it in one liter of water, we've got one milli equivalent per liter, by definition, of sodium chloride. That's what it would be. So that solution would be a one milli equivalent solution. But that's pretty weak. And so we have to do more than that uh, to have a solution that we can put into a patient intravenously. And what we mean by that is that blood has a certain osmolarity. And the unit of measure for that is milliosmoles per liter. And you just got to know this. This is just the way it is. That the range of a normal animal, normal mammal, the osmolarity of their blood and of their fluids in that blood, the plasma in it, is 280 to 310 milliosmoles per liter. So we want to put in a solution that's darn near or within that range or else we're going to cause damage to the red blood cells and the rest of the body uh, if it's not close to that number. Okay, so we've got to have solutions that we're going to put intravenously that are equivalent to that. All right, let's, before we go on, let's make sure that we know what the normal serum electrolytes are. Um, beyond knowing what the osmolality is. It all fits together. Now, normal patient has sodium. Uh, these are cations now. These are the positive ones. It has sodium. And the number that I've memorized and, and used as a reference is for sodium, it's 140 milliequivalents per liter, halfway between those. All right? And for potassium, there's only a little bit of potassium by comparison to the amount of sodium there. And that is 4. So it's about halfway between the 3.5 and the 5.0 range. That's a very narrow range. And patients that have their potassium go below 3.5 may not be able to move around very well. In fact, for horses, you get down around 3, they can't stand up anymore. And the other side, if they go up over 5, affects the heart and they may have some heart failure as a result. So it's a pretty narrow range and there isn't much there, but it's very important. Magnesium, you can see 1.5 to 2.5, so 2 is a nice number to remember. And for phosphate, uh, it's, it's about 3.5. So that's the range of the cations. And then the other major anion, the one that balances out for like sodium chloride is somewhere between 98 and 108. And I've always just remembered 100. I can't, too complicated for me to think about it more complicated than 100 is close enough. But then there's another substance and that's called bicarbonate. And bicarbonate is the buffer that keeps the pH in normal range. And you can see that it's between 22 and 32 but 24 is about the number that's usually given. So it's 24 milliequivalents per liter. But there has to be the same amount of cations and anions in the, normal, in the serum electrolytes, or nature's going to do something to make it that way. So these are the ranges. This is when you get the report back on the serum electrolytes. That's what you're looking at. And you want them to find out which ones are out of kilter, because those are the ones you're going to have to take specific care of uh, if they get too far out of the normal. All right, <clears throat> let's carry on. So let's assume that, uh, it, that we need to give intravenous fluids. And is there an absolute one that you can have at the hospital and that's all you need to use? No, you can't do it that way. But there aren't too many, and that's the good part, uh, just, just a few uh, that we need to know about because then we can select which one we want to use. And we're going to start with normal saline uh, because that's the one that's the basic solution. It's the least expensive and probably the m most used because it can be used for all kinds of things besides trying to rehydrate the patient. Okay, let's, if we wanted to make, when you buy a bag of saline or a bottle of saline, 
the normal amount is 0.9% saline for injection. That's what it's called. If you read the bag, that's what it says on it. Why is it 0.9? Because that has an osmolarity which is okay to use intravenously. And if you look down at the bottom there, right down here, it says that the osmolarity is 308. Now it's on the high side of normal, um, but it's okay. And it won't cause damage to the red cells, and so it's, it's a decent thing to use. All right. Um, but it's got some problems. Um, now, what is 0.9% saline? Well, it turns out that it has 154 milliequivalents of sodium and 154 milliequivalents of chloride, because that's all that's in it. And uh, why does that matter? What does it mean to you? Well, it means that the sodium's a little high. So the normal sodium in a patient is 140, and this solution has 154. So it's up there 14 milliequivalents per liter. Well, that's OK. That, that won't hurt things too bad, uh, because it's going to be out of the range of normal if the whole body gets up there. But it's probably not going to do that. But here's the problem. The problem is the chloride. There's 154 milliequivalents of chloride in that normal saline. And the normal patient only has 100. So what you're going to do is you, with each liter of fluids that you give that patient, you're going to be adding an extra 154 milliequivalents of chloride that you shouldn't be, but you are. And you're going to have to depend on the kidney to try to sort it out, or the electrolytes are going to get disrupted, and you're going to have some problems because of it. Now, there are places that you use this that come to advantage, um, but you can see that it's not the ideal solution for giving to most patients um, that have a fairly normal uh, serum electrolyte composition. So, but there are places to use it. Now, when could you use it? Uh, diarrhea. Why? Because the patient with diarrhea is also, besides losing water, is also using, losing a lot of sodium. So we would like to have a solution that it's at least isotonic, which means it's normal like serum electrolytes, uh, normal serum electrolytes. And this one has a little bit extra, so that would be good. So it would be good there. All right. And then there's a complicated place where it's used. And it, the condition is called hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis. Uh, We'll get into that another time, but, but for now, think about it is that if a patient has hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis, it has a low chloride in its serum. Well, now that saline would be absolutely perfect because we've got a solution that's got a whole lot of extra chlorides in it, so it will help to bring the electrolytes back to normal. Well, when does that happen in small animals or large animals? Well. Uh, this hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis occurs most commonly in patients that are vomiting, 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 vomiting. It also can occur if you drain in the stomach all the time. Why? Because the stomach has a bunch of hydrochloric acid in it, and that's a hydrogen ion plus a chloride ion. And if you keep draining them off or they keep vomiting, they're losing lots and lots of chlorides. And so they go into this hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis and it can kill them. If you don't recognize it, know that the chlorides weigh down and make the correction. Uh, there's another interesting place that it happens, and it's in cattle. And cattle can get a condition called torsion of the abomasum. And that's the true stomach of the cow, and it rotates. And that's the part of the stomach that excretes HCL. So what happens is you get this abomasum that gets bigger and bigger, filled with hydrochloric acid, and it's draining the chloride out of the uh, plasma. And so that patient goes into hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis. And the only the way to treat that cow, just to get a little ahead of the story, is to give a whole bunch of saline and to give some hydrochloric acid. You actually give the patient um, 
hydrochloric acid or ammonium chloride to get it straightened out. Ruptured bladder. 